So I'm the art director on Body Count. I'm specifically responsible for making sure that everything in the game has one coherent aesthetic look. So in Body Count, you've landed in a really, really torn up, war-torn world. It's an old world, it's a dying world. It's a very unusual way to start a game. I mean, we drop the parachute into what's effectively a very old, sort of British colonial style town. And from that point on, all of the different stages that you go through are completely different to the last one. The environments in Body Count are very fantasized, but they're also very bright and vibrant. We've used the entire color wheel in the game. We go all the way through it, from hot, polluted, yellowy green Africa, through a sort of midnight neon Asia, and then into the belly of the beast at the end, where we set you against the target in a very fiery, hellish cauldron. I wanted it to, the color to sort of match the mood. So you begin the game in Africa with yellows, and as that begins to get a little more sinister and you know bloodthirsty and more torn apart, it becomes to get a little more toxic. And then after that, the pacing of the game moves on to more dark and sinister things. And it was important for me that all these locations that we went to and visited, they had a sort of natural feel to them and there was a visual narrative to a lot of the stages. I wanted to tell stories. It was important for me to make the world seem believable. So you'll see where the compound's been overrun like Zulu and people have smashed the bus through the door to get in. And this all goes towards explaining why a lot of the environments are abandoned and derelict. There's nothing left there other than war, so there's no moral ambiguity about killing absolutely everybody. So you're a soldier fighting for an organisation known as The Network. You think that you're being sent in to fight the good fight and mop up the conflicts around the world that the governments of the world don't want to take care of themselves. Now as you get through the first act, it becomes apparent that someone else has been poking the hornet's nest and there's something else going on here. And that's where we introduce the target. The target are the real threat, they're the real bad guys. So the target's style and philosophy and their presence in the world is really sort of a dystopian, evil, really oppressive. The real cue for style was just a phrase, the cutting edge, so that you're always met with a sharp edge with them. So everything I started drawing began having cutting edges right down the center of them, so the guns, everything, you're always being met with a sharp edge, like an axe, an axe being thrown at you. The really important thing for me was to make it look like the organization had unlimited wealth and resources. So I really went for a sort of stealth by Bang & Olufsen look to things. A lot of the reward for the player is the first time you come up against a target and the buildings are going to be very tough, they're going to be very hard to get into. But you get inside their building and the initial frustration of not being allowed in is rewarded by the fact that you really do become a bull in a china shop for these things. They don't expect you to be inside, so you're able to completely destroy all the glass work, all the ceramic things. Body Count's AI is completely class-based, so the idea is that we've put these different classes together um, that operate in very different ways and have different behaviours. So, for example, we've got a medic in there who can, who can revive fallen soldiers. We've got a scavenger who will steal the game's currency intel from you and stop you from getting access to your upgrade. We've got heavy tank classes. So lots and lots of different types of AI. But then on top of that, we've got three factions. So we've got the army and the militia, and then we've got the target hidden in the background. It was important for me that when we were making Body Count that it had a handcrafted art look, and that extended to the characters as well. Each of the factions have their own unique sort of signature colours and all of those characters are sort of styled and branded to be very, very different. Now whenever these factions meet each other in the battlefield, they'll fight in a completely dynamic way and that class-based behaviour on both sides will dictate how that battle plays out. It's different every time and it's going to be a different experience for you each time you go in and attack that firefight. A lot of body count's uniqueness comes from the way in which we've used shredding and destruction, so we're not using it for set pieces, we're actually using it in the second to second experience. To be able to go into a world that looks really, really nice and it's really aesthetically pleasing, and then actually start destroying that world and smashing it to pieces is just really satisfying. Even from a tiny handgun, you feel like you're really kicking the ass out of the world. Because there's so much environmental destruction, you're never going to get the same playthrough twice. Each building will be different. What makes Body Count worthwhile for me, what makes it better in that sense, is the fact that we've stepped into some slightly different territory and we've produced a game that's got its own strong identity and doesn't deliberately set out to clone what other people have done. Body Count's the best thing since sliced bread before or after, assuming that you can actually destroy the sliced bread with a large heavy machine gun.